All right, this is time. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to Fusion 360 Increment Webinar Course Series. In today's world, electronic plays a key role starting from basic consumer products with as such as uh, smart variable to automation control of heavy machinery. So there's a need for a software that effectively co collaborates between the electronics and mechanical domains in the design environment. With Fusion 360 Electronic Workspace, the designer has all the necessary tools handy to design their circuit boards, reviewing the board in 3D, and also easily modifying the mechanical changes in natively without the need of any exchanging formats. Today, we have Manoj Kalamai with us, and he is going to talk about how to get started with Fusion 360 Electronics. Hey, Manoj, welcome again. Hey, Varun. You? Thanks. Yeah, I'm doing good. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to Autodesk webinar series. I'm Manoj. Uh, today, I'm going to join with you to explain about the basics of Fusion Electronics workflow and also like sharing the demonstration of how to start the circuit and working with the PCB and also the 3D PCB. So today's agenda is like the first few minutes I'll be sharing some slides uh, which explains you about the product design cycle kind of thing and uh, you know slowly walking through the slides of how the workspace in the fusion looks like and the last couple of minutes uh, I will be having some Q&A session. So that's today's agenda. So before jumping into uh, you know the actual fusion topic, so I believe like there are multiple audiences across different industrial domain. I think it would be helpful to you know like explaining about the basic product capabilities, like how a design you know design cycle starts in the company. So let's assume like uh, you know like a, a company is going to launch a new product. So how they are going to you know start the product planning. So we will see, you know, in terms of CAT's perspective, we will see uh, what are the design cycle happens. Suppose they are going to create a new, you know, the wearables or some consumer electronic products. The first level of planning happens, you know, in the in deciding about what is what is the product we are going to design, what are its applications, and where it is going to serve, and what is the you know the total price of the product that goes to the market. So this is our first level of you know the discussion happen, and it comes to you know the second level as to individual teams for the distribution of the task. So that time planning meeting will happen, like you know like what kind of design this is, where it is going to serve, and what what is the estimation of this? Can we do this project within this budget? All those discussions will happen, and these are the teams you know like which gets involved in designing this electronic product. So there are, you know, other teams also like which I didn't mention here, like the material engineering, and also you know the simulation team, uh, you know, like the even the manufacturing team. Uh, so those are the other teams also involved. So in terms of CAD, uh, these are the main teams which are involved in the process. So how the design starts, like, you know, like first the hardware designer that they create the analog circuits, or uh, if it involves a digital or the mixed design. So they start the process by, you know, like creating the circuits, which is going to be a rough schematic kind of thing, like the functional diagrams. And they also do, you know, selection of the components and they do the testing in the lab. So it's going to be, you know, functional thing, like a prototype kind of thing. Uh, so the next level, you know, like they will be putting the inputs to the PCB designer where they starts the actual digital CAD diagram. It's going to be the logic diagram where they get the inputs from the hardware designer, like, a kind of you know like rough sketch kind of thing so they what pcb designers they used to start is like they used to start creating the schematic by creating the library uh, because the library is the cad format that is a digital cad format which is going to be used in your schematic on the other hand like parallelly the mechanical engineer they starts using the you know creating the cad diagrams either it's going to be the assembly diagram or it's going to be the enclosure so they you know, in the other hand, they will be providing the CAD details like uh, in terms of DXF or whatever the uh, file formats, 3D file formats, that the PCB designer going to start their, you know, the uh, board. So they will get the input from mechanical outline and they will start the PCB. So this is how the process gets started. And, you know, like the PCB design, uh, when the schematic is done and the PCB, you know, the placement is done, 
they need to also consult with other teams like you know the manufacturing team like they they will be designing about uh, what number of layers i'm going to design and what what is my you know the uh, the total estimation and of this and they also discuss about the limitations and constraints uh, that is involved in the board so each step so they need to send the cad files to you know the mechanical designer once uh, certain stages of placement is done and even they send you know to the thermal engineer for after the component placement so they need they used to verify and check like okay this component is used to you know produce more heat so let's change back this component so again the pcb designer will connect to the hardware engineer to you know the change the components um, you know the values are different set of variants we need to choose so this kind of process is normally involved in the design uh, cycle uh, so the main thing we uh, i would like to emphasize here is like you know the collaboration yeah it's definitely happening and or what is the challenge here we are facing is like you know the all the industries they face with the data so how the data is transferring between these teams it's completely different right because you can see each and everything uh, uh, you know it's not available in one package uh, in a cad software so now we can identify this is the challenge like the file exchange formats so what electrical engineers they used to you know this kind of transfers will always happening between the mechanical and electrical engineer so like you know for every st uh, stages of you know the design cycle they need to export and get verified to the mechanical engineer or if they propose some changes in between that they will reiterate back so now we can understand it's not going to be you know like a one step process or the coherent process uh, the concurrent process it's going to be like you know like uh, the multi stage process and also iterative so every time it gets changes from you know the different teams so that deals with the data so how fusion is handling this challenge so the solution is we have the capability of one product development platform what's that one capability yes so we have the electronics 3d pcb and mechanical care so all this are you know the mechanical and electrical are completely into a different world what we try to integrate is you know like the file formats so ecad format you can also you know uh, work in the 3d pcb and also it can you can do the casing all those enclosures because the file format is compatible within one platform so what are the other capabilities fusion has and why we need to move for fusion 360 so you know like as i talked earlier like the file exchange formats so that is a most important you know potential point i would like to emphasize here so that's that saves lot of time between uh, these teams uh, during the export uh, we also have the you know collaboration we effectively manage by using the fusion teams where you can you know pull the designs and do the markups and you can say send for the cad team so that way you can do the effective collaboration and next thing is like you know like more than you are visualizing the project you are going to do some changes in the 3d pcb so what currently happens like the pcb designers they don't know like what happening in the mechanical side some softwares have the 3d view but here like we have the you know that associativity between this pcb and the 3d pcb right so you can do changes in your pcb like moving your components and or you want to you know resize your board or you want to do some other kind of you know chamfering or fillet of your board so these are the you know normally uh, the changes that recommended from mechanical engineers that the electrical engineers have to handle so you may know like uh, in between the stages of design there there may be you know due to the components movement uh, recommended by the mcat team so there are disturbances in the routing so all these changes will be handled in the you know uh, 3d pcb so you can reroute it and you can push the changes to the 2d pcb so we also have the package generator wizard which is having the ipc compliance uh, calculator so this we have almost uh, 38 to 40 templates uh, smds and through hole combinations so this is nothing but you are you know generating the package which is nothing but your 2d and 3d pcb so we have identified some common set of uh, you know the components 
that are used in the designs. So we have the templates and you can readily input uh, the data from you got from the specification sheet to this generators. So you will you'll get a 3D uh, model as well as a 2D footprint that is a IPC compliant. And yeah, we have the library management in cloud. Um, so we have a separate website called library.io where you will you can able to create or version your libraries and you can also share with your collaborators. So the CAM uh, is, you know, like the previews available on the CAM so really efficient uh, and, you know, pleasing um, because you can generate a different kinds of outputs uh, in the different layers that is going to be manufacturing, uh, you are going to uh, provide to the manufacturers. And we also have the SPICE simulation called the NG SPICE engine, where you can assign your models with uh, SPICE capabilities and you can do the simulation in the schematics. We also have the e-cooling simulation, which is going to greatly helpful for the thermal engineers, uh, which is currently available in the preview. And also the compelling workspace we have, uh, the rendering capabilities where you can render your boards or even your 3D models that is generated in the package generator. So that is mostly, you know, like you can share with your customers or clients, like, you know, the real realistic view of the, the board or the components. So these are the main capabilities what Fusion has. And there are other capabilities also like as a normal PCB and the schematic uh, design softwares have like, you know, the schematic sheets, we have the pin arrays for this uh, generating the symbols, um, you know, like also in the PCB, we have auto router and uh, BGA fan out and differential pairs and push and shove. So all those, you know, basic capabilities uh, Fusion editors have. So what's, uh, you know, uh, we have the different editors. Uh, we can say like uh, we have uh, three different editors in the schematic editor, the PCB and the 3D PCB. Your schematic editor is nothing but your logical representation of your circuit, uh, which is in the digital format where your symbols will be placed on the schematic and do the actual connection. And your PCB editor is nothing but your copper. So your 2D board, how it looks, uh, you know, how it is going to be manufactured. So that's a real board uh, that you can see in the, uh, you know, the PCB editor. And the third thing is the 3D PCB where, you know, like you can do some uh, visualize your boards before going for the manufacturing, do some changes or, you know, you can get to know like how uh, the board actually looks like. Because uh, most of the softwares they have, they work with the, you know, some kind of uh, outlines having the height defined, uh, the constraints during the placements. So better than that, if you go for the 3D PCB while designing an enclosure or some kind of, you know, uh, the interfacing boards. So you'll get to know like better view on the 3D PCB. So this is a basic uh, design workflow. Like uh, in any CAD software, this would be the basic workflow. Like uh, starting from the libraries, uh, those components you're going to use in the schematics. And, and you're going to the 3D, uh, I mean the 2D PCB, uh, which is like, you know, the, from the net list, it's used to generate uh, the components, uh, you know, the connections, and also what you have created on the footprint editor that comes into your uh, placement and routing. And the third stage is the additional thing that we have, uh, the Fusion is having uh, the 3D PCB editor. So these are the editors workspace uh, as a combined view. So let's see the individual views of the schematic editors where you can see the logical connections between the components. And this is about the PCB editor where your actual, you know, the board is going to be manufactured. So this is the output file. Um, so the next thing is the 3D PCB. What you have seen in the previous view that is about the 2D and now you are getting 3D view. Okay, so we have one more dedicated workspace for libraries. So we have, you know, the concept called content manager where we have four different kinds of uh, sub workspace, we can say. Uh, the first thing is the device editor, which is nothing but your component or part editor, whatever it is. So that contains your symbol, footprint and package. So symbol, again, it's like going to be used in the schematics as a logical representation. For example, the transistors, resistors, or even the ICs. 
and the third thing is the footprint editor where your 2d copper is going to be placed in your you know the pcb editor and the third thing is the package editor which is nothing but your combination of footprint and 3d model this is the library structure what fusion follows um, it starts from the device where we have the mapping of the symbol and the package and the package has the you know like two uh, kind of fragments called the footprints on the 3d model so we have coined a term called package where you can see like uh, the combination of the footprint uh, and the 3d model so that's a you know concept we have introduced uh, that's going to be greatly helpful you know like while visualizing your components like how the components going to be you know like soldered on the pcb yeah and this is the device editor where you can get the combinations of the symbol the 2d footprint and the 3d model all in the same view if you see uh, look at the left left side like the content manager so where it contains all the information about the symbols footprints devices so it contains basically you know like the mapping between uh, symbol and packages and also you can get more metadata uh, when you click the individual components this is our package generator where we have the templates uh, like starting from the basic discrete types and also you know like uh, the ICs, uh, DIPs, SYCs, so SMDs and also through holes like the axials, um, the ECAPs and we have electromechanical types also like the standoffs and spacers. So this is actually an LED which is generated through our package generator. Um, yeah, so we have added an MSC property like the physical material is actually defined on this component. That's why you can see, you know, like the light is reflected and this works in the rendering environment. So this is what I was talking about. Like you can share the images, what you are generator, um, you know, to the public or to the clients. And this is one of the model which has been created in the fusion. Um, so using the same MSC property which is nothing but your headphone amplifier. Okay, so the next thing is a managed library uh, where we can effectively, you know, do the version control. We have some set of uh, libraries which are already shipped with the Fusion and also some of the Eagle libraries that are available in the uh, server. So you can, before starting your design, you can, can go for this managed library. You can choose the components which is available or you can go and create your new components and you know manage your own version so this is one of the feature like the e-cooling stuff uh, which is currently available under the preview mode where you can do the simulation stuffs uh, like you know like the fan you can you can add the fan to control the cooling you can do the simulation by adding the internal heat value uh, called the thermal dissipation and also you need to define some ambient temperatures to get the you know the actual result so this is how the you know the collaboration happens uh, within the same platform like the data also same you can just so in fusion you know like uh, we have two different documents as we seen in the slides like the new electronic design where you are going to work for the schematics pcb and the 3d pcb and the other thing is the electronics library so what you can see is like on the left hand side is the data panel where you can see your projects uh, before starting your design you can create your own project and if you want to share with multiple teams like as we seen in the earlier stage like the thermal engineer or the mechanical engineers so you can do uh, by creating a new project so let me create a new project quickly uh, like the eCare project something like that i'm going to create a new electronic design so as soon as I opened, I can see, you know, four different icons. Uh, one is for the new, creating the new schematic where I start from the scratch. Uh, if you want to create a reference to a schematic document, uh, so that is possible. Like if you already have the Eagle format or any other CAD format converted to Eagle. So that time you can choose this option as a reference. And parallelly you can choose, you know, if you all already have the board ready with you that you can choose. And this, uh, you know, serves mainly for doing the modifications of the board or if you want to do some revisions so this option is useful and today i'm going to create a new schematic 
So uh, as soon as I created, I can see, you know, this, this is my project preview. Uh, it's in the image format where I can see the, you know, the templates of schematics as soon as I create the PCB and 3D PCB, all it appears in one panel. I'm going to save this. Anuj, can you just close your data panel so that the screen becomes. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. All right. So this is going to be my new ECAD demo for today. And I'm going to choose my new folder that we have created. That is the ECAD. And also I'm saving my schematic. So as soon as you know, I switch from the empty schematic to the PCB, I can see the board view. So this is the default size where I can save again as a PCB. So whatever I've created, you know, like it appears uh, into this project. You can also see, you know, the empty board and the schematic editor here. I'm going to rename this to, you know, the schematics anyway so let it be uh, so the schematics and the pcb editor is there and even i can switch back to you know like the 3d pcb where it creates your empty 3d uh, pcb board i'm gonna save this again uh, you need to save, save in the same project folder. It's uh, ac actually a good practice, you know, keeping in one folder uh, what are the files that you have created for reference. I'm saving as SACAD 3D. Okay, so all my files are up here, here. And you can, you can see the, you know, the panel uh, which contains all these documents. So uh, to start my schematics, uh, I go on, I'm going to add my part. Um, so I was trying to explain about the, how to create a library. Um, so for creating the library, I need to choose new electronics library uh, because your design, uh, you know, starts with your library. So here is the, you know, the icons, what we have seen earlier, like the different kind of sub workspace, uh, where I uh, currently I'm going to start with, uh, you know, some triple five timer as my symbol. I'm going to use the pin array pattern for my symbol. This is the base number and this is a total pin count. I'm going to generate the outlines and name and values. I need to choose the sites. Okay, this is my symbol. I'm going to place in the origin. So I want to, you know, create a basic uh, triple five timer IC. Um, I need to switch the grid for doing okay no problem so I'm just moving the spins just to make you know uh, enough room for the wires to connect in the schematics i'm going to quickly name this uh, each pin uh, you know in the inspector panel where you can select your pin and name uh, i know like you know this are the pin names for the triple five uh, timer ic uh, this is going to be my reset pin and this is going to be my discharge pin this is my threshold and this is my trigger point going to be my ground and yeah this is going to be a supply pin This is my control voltage. And the last thing is, you know, the output, which is the third pin. 
Okay, I created my symbol. Uh, so this is like you know, for less number of pins, you can use a pin array. Uh, if you have uh, uh, you know high pin counts, you can also use the option for smart paste, where you can copy the pin names types in a CSV, and you can paste over here. So I'm gonna save this library first. Oh, the timer. Okay. So as soon as I save, like you know, I got the symbol in the control man, uh, content manager. So then now the next step is to going to create the package. Uh, for this, I'm going to use the option for creating the new package. I can see the package 3D where I got many templates. I'm going for SOIC package. So these the kind of details you'll be getting from the data sheets, uh, but I uh, need to run through. So I'm just entering some values which are most commonly used for this kind of ICs. Uh, this is the height I've entered. This is the pitch between distance between the pins. And this is the E value where you have span value. I'm just entering the five mm span. And this seems okay because most of the SOICs will have this kind of, you know, the landing area on the pit will be same. I'm gonna enter this dimension as six, and this is somewhere around four. So this is nothing but your body length and width. I'm going to generate my package quickly. Uh, I think I need to choose a bigger E value, yeah. So now what you can see is a 3D model and what are the sketch lines you can see is nothing but your footprint. And you can also see the sill screen outline and the pin on marking. So I'm gonna save this um, in the same project folder. What you can see is like the names we follow is IPC standards and or you can always uh, define your own name. So as soon as I save, uh, I can see in the con content manager like the packages it will take some time to load yeah i got this you can see the footprints that is mapped to a 3d model i have the symbols ready now i'm going to create the device that is the next step i'm going to create a new device called the triple phi okay so now we got this window i'm going to you know like shrink this inspector i'm going to add my symbol first that we have recently created in the symbol editor and the next step is uh, I'm going to add the package. So what you can see is like the package variant uh, that I've created. Um, you can also choose a number of different variants, like for example, uh, through all packages, or whatever you know uh, you are going for in the data sheet. So you can see uh, the warning sign, which is nothing but your connect. It's unconnected now. I'm going to connect this. Uh, the ground pin is for four. I'm sorry ground pin goes to the first output to three discharge to seven threshold six and trigger okay so now we can see the warning sign has gone off uh, because now my part is connected so what you can see is like at one view you can see the entire you know the cat data so i'm going to save this again you can always mention your own version so now i'm going back to my schematic uh, to add this part so you can see like the different you know the teams that i can see yeah the library underscore timer that we have created I'm going to add this part. So you know, like uh, uh, this demonstration, I'm going to show a basic feature of the triple five timer. Like in the as table mode, uh, you can control the you know the speed of the motor uh, using the potentiometer. I'm just going to quickly add the other parts uh, due to the time constraint. I'm going to add uh, some of the parts from my sample library, uh, which I already created. So this is my supply pin to the IC and also to power up the motor and a couple of diodes. 
So if you do the right click, it will automatically do the rotation um, during the placement. And also I need to choose this MOSFET to drive the motor. And I need, yeah, the potentiometer to control the charging of the, you know, the capacitor. And also I need a capacitor for my design. I'm going to choose randomly some package. So I need to choose here. Okay, I need also the resistors. I can take a chip package. Okay, and the last thing is the ground, uh, which we have a separate library for that, for power symbols, where I'm going to choose uh, the ground, F ground, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to start the connections. Uh, let me quickly turn the connection. So I'm going to connect this supply pin and also the reset pin to the supply and the ground pin. I'm going to connect this potentiometer. Yes, and I'm going to connect this output to this MOSFET to drive the motor and to avoid the, you know, reverse. Some reverse, uh, you know, the uh, current that I'm going to put a diode here and the seventh pin I'm going to connect this the discharge which is going to you know uh, charging and discharging uh, you know of the capacitor and the sixth and the second pin i'm going to connect this to the potentiometer control so i done my connections i think few connections are left here i'm going not going to use the control voltage i'm going to ground this to avoid the no unnecessary noise Okay, pretty decent schematic. I'm going to save this out. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my PCB document now where my components are placed uh, near the origin. Uh, so I need to pull this in the board. So I'm going to quickly start the, you know, the placement. That is the first thing. Uh, I'm going to rotate this because you need to always, it's a good practice to do the board edge components and starting placing the critical components first. So I'm just doing a rough placement uh, just to save the time. Oh, these are the capacitors that comes near the IC. Okay. Okay, pretty decent placement. Uh, the last thing is the MOSFET. I'm going to shrink this board. Okay. Okay, so this is fine. So I have my uh, done my placement. Um, I'm going to do quickly the routing. 
uh, I was trying to explain the you know the manual routing, but uh, due to the con time constraint, I'm just going to do the auto router. Uh, it's pretty decent results. Like you will get the different topologies based on the algorithms. Um, so I'm going to choose one of the you know optimized way without vias. So it's fine for me. And if you want to change the routing thickness, you can always do in the design rules. So now my routing is done. Uh, the next step is like uh, we are going to visualize the PCB. So it takes some time for computation. Okay. So now what I can see is like uh, the combination of all the through hole and SMDs. Um, even you can see the you know the routings on the board, which is nothing but your actual geometries uh, where it contains you know the proper material and also the thickness. All these details you are going to be used in the simulation for producing the exact results. Suppose uh, if I want to you know like do some changes to this board. Um, so now I'm gonna save this again back. I'm going to the project view. Now you can see like all the four different views, uh, the top view and the bottom view of the 3D PCB as well. I'm going back to my board. Uh, now you think like I, I can do some changes to this, like I can do some, um, you know, like chamfering. You need to click the option for the outline where it, you know, it, it will detect the sketch of the board. I'm going to do some kind of chamfering on the corners. Okay, so I did my changes. What I what is the next step? I need to push to the 2D PCB so that I can see the changes back reverted in this. I'm gonna save this back again um, to maintain the consistency, and uh, I'm going to switch back to schematic. Suppose uh, if I need to add more like uh, mechanical models, uh, like you know, like we have a separate library for that called the standoffs where it used to maintain the spacing between the components. I'm going for a male-female standoff, like uh, I'm choosing this metric size. Um, so mostly uh, this kind of components will be connected to the ground, but now I'm leaving as it is. And you can also add the border. I uh, just forgot to mention that, like we have some library template for the borders where you can where you can add like you know like the template which defines your project i'm gonna save this back switching to the pcb where you can see all the mounting you know the standoffs i'm just gonna quickly place this on the corners and switching back to the 3d pcb Okay, so now I got the details uh, reflected back. Like you can do, you know, for interfacing to other boards, or you can also do uh, the enclosure design with this. Um, yeah, this is what I was about to, uh, you know, show the demonstration that connectivity between the, you know, ECAD and MCAD. I'm gonna save this back again. Uh, suppose if I want to work for the, you know, uh, one more board uh, to be interfaced, I can create a new design from this. Like I can, you know, like save as this, something like version two in the same project. So I'm going to qu quickly open this. So just imagine like this is a copy of the board uh, which I've created. Takes time to load. Okay, so now if my uh, I push the changes, uh, it says like uh, you don't have the 3D, 3D uh, you know 2D document linked. Um, so in this case, I'm going to create a new electronics design on reference to this PCB.
Okay. I think we are running out of time. Uh, Varun, we still have time or we have time for the Q&A? Hey, Manoj, uh, we'll extend this session for a, for a couple of extra minutes. So I think we, mm -hmm. can, we can still uh, go, go with this, go with the flow. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so I think I'm gonna save this again, something like version three. Save as. Okay. Take some time to load. Okay, so I took some other board uh, in the meanwhile. So what I'm trying to do is like, I'm going to create a new mechanical design. I'm going to, you know, like uh, calling this two different version of 3D model, uh, 3D PCBs. I can go for a different, which I already have. I can show the ready example, which is available uh, due to the time constraint. Okay. So what you can do is like you can uh, you know when it is a traditional mechanical design you can insert the 3D PCB into your workspace where you can you know pile up your PCBs uh, in case if you are going to work on the stack of boards kind of things. So that's what I was trying to explain here but um, it takes some time to open. So this is the board which I already created and uh, this is the first version where if I want to do uh, one more version, uh, you know, that is going to be interfaced to this board, I can do, uh, you know, insert into the current design where it's going to be a pure mechanical model. So you can adjust your you know, the model, uh, the 3D PCB uh, that's going to be mating with this PCB, uh, the first version. I'm gonna save this. And also if you see like uh, there are two different documents, uh, the same way you can add multiple, you know, the documents also, uh, the PCB files. So suppose if I do some changes, uh, like if you are going for changes in the spacer dimension or something like if you are going for 10 mm or you are going to make it as 5 mm, that is also possible. The changes will be reflected back in the PCB, uh, you know, also as well as in the 3D PCB. So that kind of associativity we are going, uh, we are creating in the Fusion 360 electronics. So uh, I think it hope uh, it's going to be very helpful for, you know, the both electrical mechanic and engineers. So this is like breaking the, uh, the breakdown, uh, you know, the between the electrical and mechanical engineers. So, you know, it's very simple, like, uh, either of them can work easily into this workspace. 
yeah so this is what i was about to share on today's uh, you know the session um, let's see if we get some q and a's uh, for this okay we got some poll in progress yeah that's uh, that's done by me thank you manoj thank you awesome so uh, everyone uh, this is the time to have uh, to post your questions in the q and a we already have few varun you may want to yes okay so naman asked this question is there any way to add batteries and charging circuit in fusion 360 yeah so we can add in, you know like in mechanical perspective we can add this uh, but you know in terms of simulation uh, you can go for uh, you know assigning the spice models uh, to your circuits that way you can see the results in the schematics we have a dedicated uh, workspace for you know the fusion uh, i'm sorry the simulation in the schematics uh, where you can get the results you know in the analog or digital simulation okay how do you add the components which are not present in the component library ladit asked this question okay so you can uh, what you can see like right, uh, in the demonstration like we have added created a new library and created the uh, symbol and the footprint and uh, you know the device so that way you can organize your own library like suppose if you have already existing library without any models uh, you can still you know create the managed version and you can go to the web or you can assign create you know the 3d models from the fusion uh, package generators and that way you can assign your models so that you know the most of the users have this you know the queries like why i can't see my 3d model uh, into my 3d pcb the reason is like they don't have the models assigned to their package so if you have a proper 3d model assigned yeah you can still see in the 3d pcb right yeah. Is there any is there any specific guidelines for routing BGA components? Yeah, that's a good question. Like uh, we have a BGA fan out, uh, so that is very effective. Uh, you know that works for high pin counts or fine pitch components. Um, so yeah, we have that capability. Okay, so I'm not too familiar with these BGA BGA components. Would you like to show something to the audience? Audience. Yeah, so BG is basically, you know, uh, so it's a very fine pitch components, fine pitch in the sense like, you know, while during uh, the soldering process, it, the, the way they are going to handle is completely different because, you know, the pins adjacent to each other is very fine. Uh, I mean, the distance between the each pins. Um, so that the pads arrangement is also completely different, like it's kind of ball, kind of spear, kind of pad. So you need to ha have a special kind of attention for mounting, you know, soldering uh, that that needs to be followed for the PCB. And BGAs are mostly, you know, for processors or controllers, and even for FPGAs uh, that are used. Uh, you can see like even uh, 3000 pins are uh, still available, you know, in the Intel processor uh, for, you know, the BGA package, yeah. Right, and is auto routing possible for BGA components? Yeah, uh, you know, like if you place the component in the PCB editor and uh, if you choose the app option called Fano, um, so you can get, you know, it's kind of auto routing technology. The algorithms that has is, you know, uh, it detects like where the uh, constraints are there and as per that, it will choose the VR. Uh, so it's like basically, you know, like you can't uh, do the trace, uh, you know, the traces between the pins. So for that, you need to go for the option for VRs that you you are going to do the routing in uh, in, in uh, internal layers in pcb you know like uh, you can do top layer routing or bottom layer or if it is a complex pcb you don't have the space uh, in your board uh, the number of layers will be increased so you can even do the routings in the internal layers uh, so that way the bga routing will be mostly done if it is a fine pitch component right awesome okay so siddharth asked this question are there any limitations of number of components in simulation? 
Uh, so far, uh, you know, uh, we have some existing components like the basic discrete components, uh, the transistors, you know, resistors. All we have assigned the intrinsic property, which is nothing but your spice model property assigned. So you can do ready simulation. Uh, but if you want to go for more specific simulation, uh, you need to go for, you know, getting the details from the specification sheet or even some manufacturers, they provide the spice files where you can assign for this uh, symbol and then you can do the simulation there. Right. And we have one more question coming from Kavi again. Based on what you do, uh, do you define power and ground planes in the design? Yeah, uh, I, I actually I didn't show in my presentation because it's very simple circuit uh, just for, you know, to show the ECAD, MCAD, the iterations I have done shown the copper pour, all those details. It involves a lot of big process when you design a PCB like, you know, you need to take care of the uh, grounding the pins and also you need to do some copper areas. Yeah, so in Fusion we have the, you know, the layers up to you know, the 16 layers where you can have your own internal layers that can be dedicated for the, the copper uh, pore, uh, I mean for the ground planes and even for the power planes. So normally, you know, four layer stack ups will have like the top layer uh, for routing and the, you know, the internal layers, for one for the ground and one for, you know, the powers, just to avoid the unnecessary noise and the return path. Right. Is there any okay. other questions? Yeah, we do have more questions. I'm just filtering them because some of these questions okay. are already answered. Okay, I mean, Ashok just mentioned, can we, is it possible to have one more session on electronics? To your question, Ashok, uh, we have one more session day after tomorrow, right? In that session, we have one, one person who will join us as an expert. In that session, we are going to make uh, a small solar, solar powered or DIY lampshade, uh, right? So it's going to be the LED lamp and it will uh, have a small element of electronics and some mechanical assembly. So please uh, please feel free to attend that. Uh, and also adding to that, uh, we can look into, you know, based on your suggestions, like we can add more courses like uh, dedicated to the library workspace, how to, you know, yes. create the packages, all those stuff. Uh, yeah. Right, so Dart asked this question. How do you feel to work on Fusion Electronics Library than Eagle? Uh, I feel like more uh, comfortable in Fusion because you can get the entire view of the content manager where your metadata lies. And also we currently have the support of, you know, pulling the data from library.io where you can manage your libraries or even what are the packages you have created in Fusion that you can always, you know, create a managed library to the server. So we have, we do have all the capabilities what Eagle has, but still some of the legacy users, they feel comfortable in the Eagle uh, in terms of UI, all those stuff. But I uh, recommend you to, you know, switch to Fusion because we have many capabilities and even the package generator support uh, we extended for many different electromechanicals like the spaces, what you are seeing, and even the snap locks connector, uh, we, have, we have the support only in Fusion. Uh, we don't have currently uh, support in Eagle or in the library.io. Yeah. Right. What if you want to find a specific part that does not exist in any of the pre-downloaded library? For example, one person cannot find Excel 6009. What happens then? Uh, I would suggest like uh, nowadays many, uh, you know, like CAD libraries are already available uh, in the you know, vendor website. Uh, for example, the DigiKey, they are providing the EDM models. Uh, so what you can do is like you can, um, you can download that and you can import to, you know, the Fusion or you can create your own, but I would encourage if it is, you know, common package, which you can find in our package generators, uh, I, I would recommend you to create uh, with uh, the package, you know, the calculator because you're going to get the IPC footprint and also the 3D model at one click. And we also have a good searching capability like uh, in our database, uh, if you go to library.io, where you can filter your results based on what kind of IPC family it belongs to, or what is the, you know, the lead dimension or the lead span, and also the, you know, JDEC variance. So, yeah. Right. 
Okay, so Akash wants to know, is it possible to design flexible PCBs? Uh, yeah, that's, you know, like currently we don't have the support uh, for the flex PCBs. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, the market trend like uh, many, uh, uh, you know, other softwares also targeting that to create a flexible PCB. Um, yeah, but we will, it's a good point, like we will look into that. Kavya wants to know, can PCB files from other softwares be open here and edited? Okay, so uh, if it is in other file formats, currently we have the support uh, for importing, you know, the ORCAD uh, libra uh, library file and also Altium file. Um, but if you have uh, the other CAD formats and Cadence or something, uh, if you can able to convert into ASCII format, uh, I think we have the support in, you know, importing into the Fusion. Got that. Uh, I think there's a question by Vijay. How to root the components in PCB board using Fusion 360? I somehow feel this is was already covered, right? But you can still answer that. Yeah, so we have many routing capabilities like, uh, you know, the BGA router uh, that is for complex ICs and also the basic thing like the manual router, uh, which uh, also includes your design rules like the push and shove option. Uh, like it will, you know, escape the traces which are, which are detected as shots. And also we have the differential pair routing and uh, yeah, so many you can explore, like if you go to the PCB editor workspace, you have many routing capabilities. Uh, but I couldn't be able to cover this uh, in this session, but maybe we can have a separate session to explain about how, what are the best practices in, you know, the PCB uh, designing uh, in particular to the, you know, the routing, all those things. Right. I think we are good and on time. Thank you so much, Manoj. Anyway, and thank our, you guys. Our, our audience was like super uh, patient, you know. They were like really supportive for all the glitches. It's not like this is happening for the first time. We have noticed that in previous webinars also, and everybody was like super supportive. So thanks everyone for that. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a nice time. Awesome. And last but not the least, so guys, tomorrow we have a session on remote team collaboration. If you have subscribed to Fusion, if you are working remotely, if you want your team members to work from remote places and you want to be more effective in the data collaboration, this is your session. So feel free to join tomorrow 3 p.m. Uh, I just uh, heard from the team that the link shared in today's webinar was uh, outdated. So the easiest way to join these webinars is just go to the website, increment the landing page, click watch now, that's it, right? The, the link we also send is the, actually the same link. There is nothing so uh, different about that. Uh, Fusion 360 professional version is also available at 50% discount. If anybody wants to purchase, this is the right time. In India, the costs are actually 11,210 for one year. That includes everything, you know, every single thing in the package. For three years, this is going to be 30,000. So uh, just act now if you're ever planning to purchase Fusion 360. This is the way, uh, the, the link to access the, the, uh, the discounted offer. If you want to reach out to us, this is our handler, Fusion 316. If you have any other suggestions or some innovative work in progress, reach out to me. I'm very much passionate about working with people to make sure you know they do they keep on doing great stuff. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Manoj. Thank you, Anand. And thanks all the participants for being so patient and encouraging in this webinar. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thanks, Karun. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. Everyone, bye.